unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 10. The Bible says, for we are his workmanship, praise God, created in what? In Christ Jesus. And to what? And to good works. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and to good works. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are God's workmanship created in Christ. The Bible says and to good works which God has beforehand ordained that we should walk in them. Praise God. Somebody say, I'm God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Say, and two good works. Say it again. I'm God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. And two good works. Say it again. For I am his workmanship created in and two what? Good works. Praise God. So, when the Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, the Bible tells you and I that firstly, when you become born again, like you and I, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, he says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and two good works which God has foreordained that we should walk in them. When you become born again, when you receive the life of Christ, when you say, I have received you as my personal Lord and Savior, something remarkable takes place. You take possession of a great, great, great grace upon your life. And this is that every new creation in Christ is created in Christ. In fact, the literal word therefore created in Christ is fabricated in, manufactured in. Praise God. When God wanted to make a new man, when God intended to make a new creation, he could not make a new creation outside Christ. When the Bible says that you are his workmanship, fabricated in Christ. You're his workmanship, manufactured in Christ. You're his workmanship, placed in Christ and to good works. It means, firstly, for God to create what you and I knew, call new creation. He had to enter Jesus and make something. He didn't make it out of, out of Jesus. He did not create the new creation besides Christ. No. He had to enter Christ. Like Genesis tells us of the first Adam. The Bible says that he put man in a what? In sleep. Because he saw man was what? Lonely. And then he goes into the side of this man. And in the man's rib, the Bible says he what? He made a helper suitable. Praise God. He got woman out of him. Praise God. And then he closed the flesh and sealed it. And the Bible says, and woman came out. And Adam says, this is who? This is woman because she was taken out of me. That is the first Adam. How many of you know that Jesus is regarded and called the second Adam in the New Testament. Now, when he, when he wanted to create the church, somebody shout hallelujah. When he wanted to make him a groom, uh, sorry, what, a bride, what did he do? The Bible says he went inside Jesus. The same way he did it for Adam in Genesis. Hallelujah. He, he, oh, the same way he made it for Adam in Genesis. He entered the inside of this man. You are his workmanship, created in Christ, manufactured in Christ, fabricated in Christ, made in Christ. 
Let us create man in our own image. He creates man. And out of man, he makes what? Woman. Somebody shout hallelujah. So woman is part of man. A hundred percent. Eve. Woman is part of man. A hundred percent. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is nothing in Eve that wasn't gotten out of Adam. Are you getting it? It's the same thing. He had to enter Christ. He had to enter the person of Christ. He had to enter the integrity of the Christ. He had to enter the nature of the Christ. He had to enter the mind of the Christ. He had to enter the feeling of the Christ. He had to enter the consciousness of the Christ. And then he made you. Pinch on yourself and say, mm, fearfully and wonderfully made. Praise God. Praise God. And he says, and two good works. Think about it. You know, sometimes we preach and things don't enter here. But take a minute only and just breathe that word in for a moment. That when you look at your hands, woo, Jesus, when you look at your eyes, when you look at your body, when you look at your thought, when you look at everything that surrounds you, it is Christ. That's why you're his bride. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I don't care what the doctor said is in your body. I don't care what the situation says is around you. I don't care what you think you're going through. No. He suffered all things. He endured suffering. Praise God. And he became the captain of our salvation through suffering. He has been given a name above every name. That at the sound of that name, every knee bows. Do you believe it? Every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell yourself I have the life which is of God. Amen. 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 He says you're his workmanship. Created in Christ. Can we go a bit deeper? And two good works. Now, the Greek word there for works is the word agon. E-R-G-O-N. It's the word agon. And agon means business. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good business. It also means employment. You're God's workmanship in Christ Jesus created unto what? In Christ Jesus unto what? good employee praise god it also means anything that you're occupied with and anything that one undertakes to do whether it's an enterprise whether it's a product whatever anything you do he says by hand or art or industry or mind he says it is good in christ hallelujah that means when you get a job and they choose to employ you They've not employed a normal human being. Hallelujah. They've employed the Christ gene in their business. Praise God. That means when you start a company, the Christ gene has started a company. Praise God. That is why when you do any form of art, the Christ gene is doing an art. Praise God. That is why when you start a business, the Christ being is doing a business. There is no way you can fail. That is why pastors, saints, we need to tell the church to learn to work hard. Because the works are not manifest when you sit in bed and speak in tongues. Hey! Young people get jobs. Praise God. Whether they give you 50,000, do it. Whether they give you 100,000, do it. The Christ gene is not paid by the boss. Hallelujah. It is paid by God. Hallelujah! My first job, I used to earn a hundred thousand. Yes. And yet as a good student, I didn't just pass. I didn't have those lowers. Praise God. No, I didn't pass with lowers. Yes, I was one of the best. Praise God. But when I got a job, hallelujah, I didn't even, no, 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 no. I knew what I was made of. Praise God. 
I didn't look at what they were going to pay me, no. I looked at what I was bringing on the table, praise God. I looked at the good of virtue that was coming out of the Christ gene. And I knew it's only a matter of time. The Lord will bless the works of your hands. Praise God. You know why the church has kept in poverty? Because we're not teaching young people these things. We don't teach them to see Father. The next 10 and 20 years. We must plan to be on top of this world. Not Uganda. Not Africa. Praise God. Our brains must be planning. How are we going to have the biggest engineer here? The biggest doctor in the world here? The biggest businessman here? As you hire them, you preach the gospel to the glory of God. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yes. Do something with yourself. Don't give ministers an excuse. Don't give ministers an excuse. Oh, you know why? Because I'm serving. Uh uh-uh. uh. Do something with yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, do something. If you're not doing anything. Praise God. So that means when I go into this business, the God gene enters there. <laughs> Think about it. How can you not be an excellent employee? How can you not be the employee of the month? How many of you have received those things? Employee of the month, employee of... But just stand up, stand up. If you've been here and you've been working and they say you're the employee of the month, you're the employee of the year, you've been there. And, and, no, you stand up if you've... Re- Look at that! God's workmanship created in Christ and two good works, I'm proud of you. How can you not be the best? Tell your neighbor we are the best in everything. For me, even in my workplace, they'll tell you as a performer. I was a performer. There was no, I would not perform. Now, they started to have problems because I was performing more than I was applying because I knew how to speak certain things. Praise God. So then they started to have problems. Oh, but this guy, how? Maybe the, th- the business is just running on its own. No. No, the Christ gene entered. Your bosses are so blessed to have you. I used to tell that myself that every morning. I used to say, oh my goodness, what a lucky bank to have me a whole me, Apostle Grace. <laughs> wow. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. This is a consciousness. When they were hiring me in the last bank, the boss gave me a target. A hard one. He knew I would not hit it. He looked at me and said, can you deliver this to provoke my spirit? I told him, no, this I can double. And by November that year, I had doubled it. And I kept it. I kept that, that email so that I'll show my children. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Recently, I've been receiving... You know, text messages of testimonies. Oh, recently some guy is um, one of the head of a certain department in a bank. He said, I was called employee of the year. The whole country. I said, that, yeah, that, your God's workmanship. Praise God. That means everything you tend to do will be excellent. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. This will change you. You know, some of you hear some things, but when they get into your spirit, they change you. John chapter 9, verses 5. Jesus said, As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Praise God. He said, as long as I, Jesus Christ, am in the world. He says, I am the light of the world. As long as I'm in the world. Did Jesus leave the world? No. He was talking about his physical presence. Praise God. He was talking about his physical what? Presence. He was saying physically. As long as I am physically in the world, I am the light of the world. If I'm physically in the world. Praise God. And then he, but he was planning to leave. That is why he turns to the church before he leaves and he tells them, it is good that I go. There was advantage because there will be nothing on earth representing me. 
as the light of the world. Hallelujah. It didn't mean I won't be. It only, mean, it only means that when it comes to my physical presence, it defines the operation on the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 and verses 14. <laughs> Woo! Scream before you read it. He said, ye are the light of the world. Hallelujah. He says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You know, do you know how some people read that scripture? Some people read that scripture this way. They say, you are the light of the world. You are the city on a hill that cannot be hid. That's not what that scripture says. That scripture says, you are the light of the world. And, and he likens it and says, a city on a hill cannot be hid. <laughs> Who has understood what I said? Did you get it? Yes. He didn't say, you're the light of the world. You're the city on a hill. No. He says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Did you understand what I said? He means to say, you are the light of the world and you're positioned in a place where you cannot be hid. Those are two truths. One, you are the light, praise God. But two, you cannot be hid. Ah, turn to your neighbor and tell him, I cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. Do you know what that means? It means nobody can frustrate your opportunity. No. Even that one who thinks they are getting you sucked. No. They are only sending you to a wealthier place. He's saying the talent on you cannot be hid. He's saying the glory on your life cannot be hid. The skill on you cannot be hid. Uh-uh. 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 You cannot be hid. Even if you say, let me hide. No. Even if somebody takes your glory. You understand? You do one thing and somebody says, I am the one. It doesn't matter. Many years ago, many, many years ago, I had a very interesting situation that happened. There was somebody I knew, they felt very sick and then they got to a place of death and then they were taken to ICU and the doctors told the family, you know what? Medically speaking, this person is gone. You're punishing their body to keep them on a life support machine. Now this person had gone into hospital with a certain believer. And this believer was praying for this person and praying for this person and praying with this person and praying for them. They were praying for them. And then this person calls me, the one who was praying for them, and said, you know what? Grace Lubega, I have given up. This is the believer. They told me I have what? Given up. I have prayed. I have prayed. Now they are going to take this woman off oxygen. They are saying it's useless to keep her body. It's being punished. Everything in her is, home, is about dead. What should I do? I tell the person, wait for me. So I went to Mulago in ICU. I enter ICU. I pray for this person. And then I tell this minister that by morning this person will be awake. By the grace of God, the next morning that woman was awake and healed. It is amazing that the same person who was dying that night was taken out of ICU into the general ward and they were saying, we don't know what happened within those hours. Praise God. That person never saw me. That person was never told I was there. And then this person started testifying. <laughs> One day, I was in a meeting and that person was testifying. And then they were testifying. <laughs> they went to the minister who told me I have failed. And then she points to the minister and says, this minister has faith. 
If it wasn't for the faith of this minister, I would have been dead. I say, Karaba. So I waited for this minister to hear what the minister would say. So this person went on and on testifying and then they even gave this minister his seed for praying for them and then it was a big story. They testified. I'm here waiting to hear. So the minister goes on the pulpit and said, I always tell you we have faith. I sat down and I was like, I didn't want glory. No, it's not what I was looking for. But I thought at least the minister would be humble to just say a statement like, you know, God, to God be the glory. and Continue. No. Oh, the minister went on and on of the things God had showed. The, how God had showed the minister how everything would change. And then God shut me. And then when I prayed, then the Lord revealed. Hey, Mama, it became a sermon. I'm watching. I'm remembering the words that were told me. I have failed. Now, but I'm seeing the, the laurels. They are being thrown everywhere. How they had to believe. And then they fasted. And then God told them, this person must leave. I'm watching. Hallelujah. I'm not the kind who looks for glory. No. There are many things I've done and I would rather they never be saved. Because there's something that comes when you learn to do in secret. There is something that comes when you learn to do in secret. The Bible says, and the Lord who sees you do in secret, he will reward you openly. Don't question the altar when you say a man openly rewarded. There is something behind that you don't know. Never question a man's results when you don't know his altar and his seed. Never do that. Don't judge it. Don't judge it. Because you might not know what you're judging. You might go against the very thing you need. Hallelujah. And when you set yourself against such courses, many things in your foundations break way beyond. And you may never build even a quarter. Praise God. I had, and I had, and I had, and I had how this minister went on. I promise you it became a someone. On a person who called me and told me, I have failed. And I remember going back home. I was not disturbed that my name was, was mentioned. No, I'm not like that. But I was disturbed that this person took advantage of something and, you know, you understand what I mean. It was a bit disturbed. You guys, you know, if, if, if I know it's another person, I say, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But now God is good. Then go on what God can do. No, this person went into the 25 things she did to get this person healed. You understand? And they were not true. Because this same person had told me, I have failed. Praise God. And I remember going back home that day. It, I was disappointed but also laughing in my heart because I saw too much drama for the day. And one time the Spirit of the Lord told me, you cannot be hid. You cannot be hid. You cannot be hid. You cannot be hid. Praise God. And hid, I mean to say, my reward with you, this is God telling me, will be open one day. It will be open one day. Praise God. You don't even need to put your name on a man's miracle. You don't even need to claim you pray for him. Mm -mm. There is something that goes beyond what a man will ever speak about you. There is something that becomes bigger than any man's testimony about or against you. It's called the vindication of the spirit. That thing is bigger than any accuser. That thing is bigger than any, any positive testimony. No man will ever testify positively enough to get you to where God will put you. And no man will ever accuse you negatively enough to take you away from where God has appointed you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So for praise or criticism, you stay on your course. 
Because you know who you are ordained to please. Somebody shout hallelujah. Learn to do things in secret. Tell your neighbor, learn to do things in secret. Now, if I was like certain ministers, I would have gone back to that person and said, but by the way, do you know that on that night, this minister called me and said that, do you know that I'm the, do, do you know I'm the one? But I've never done that. And I'll never do it. And that person will never know. Praise God. Praise God. We've done things for people and they never knew. <laughs> for ministries. And we even made sure that our names would never be mentioned. You know why? Because when you learn the secret way. I repeat. When you learn the secret way. There is a way God starts to reward you openly. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, he says, you are the light of the world. Now, what do you mean by that? No, listen, the same word there for light in Matthew is the same word for light in John 9, 5. It's force. P-H-O-S, the Greek word there. You are the light of the world. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. I have come out of this world. You are in the world now. You are the light of the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he says, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. He means I have not lit you to be hid. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. That's why he goes in the 15th verse and says, neither do men light a candle and put it under what? A bushel. But they put it on a what? On a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Somebody shout Hallelujah. And so he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good ergons and glorify your father which is in heaven. He's trying to tell you, I did not put light on you to be hid. Mark picks the same narrative in Mark chapter 4 verses 21. And the Bible says, and he said unto them, same scripture, a candle and he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? Do we put candles under bushels? Do we cover them under baskets or under beds? And not to be set on a candlestick? That means that every candle that is lit is lit to be put on a what? Hey, on a what? On a candlestick. And then he says, for there is nothing here which shall not be manifested. Neither shall anything kept secret, but it should come what? Abroad. Now, do you know how religious people use that scripture? There's nothing you are hiding that shall not come out. You continue doing this and doing that. Everything you are hiding, eh? It shall come up. That's not what Jesus was talking about. That's not what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about the light. Praise God. He was talking about you which is born again and carries the light of the glorious gospel. He was not talking about those ones who do bad things. That scripture is not true. If you put it in that perspective of the law. Not everything you have done has come out. Answer me. See, not yet it will. Even if you're 70 years old. Not everything you've done has come out. Even at 70, there are things you look back and say, ah, that one, oh God, how did you cover it? But you did. Oh. Thanks be to God who does not put us to shame. Woo-wee. Woo-wee. Imagine if he was that God. Now he opens everything. Mama, 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 mama. <laughs> Aha. Woo. I'm a pastor. I hear things. Believe me. Praise God. That scripture is not talking about that kind of stuff. In fact, God does not intend that he should expose you. He intends to help you. That's the work of God. That's the work of God. He intends that he will bury your thing and kill it. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's what God is. 
And some people scare young people and old people in that. And then some people do these things and then they are not what? Uncovered. You see what I'm saying? And then some even continue to do bad because they realize it's not coming through. God does not draw us by threats. He draws us by love. And that love never fails. Praise God. There is forgiveness with thee that men might what? Fear thee. That's why we fear the Lord. Because he's too forgiving. He's righteous in making the sinner righteous. <laughs> That's the righteousness of God. His righteousness is not in the punishing of the sinner. His righteousness is in making the sinner what? Righteous. Somebody shout hallelujah. And when a man learns, learns the love way, you realize you walk out of things effortlessly. Because you don't walk out of them with conditions. You walk out of them in the revelation of love. And that love never fails to take you out. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Now let's go back to our art. He says this scandal. Is it lead to be put under a bushel? Is it lead to be put under a bed? No. He says it is lead that it is put on a candlestick. So it would give light to everyone in the, in the house. House means earth, world. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he's trying to say this very thing. I did not give you that skill. So it would die unnoticed. I did not give you that voice. So it would die that unnoticed. I did not give you that wisdom. So no man would, listen, would, 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 would not listen to it. I did not give you that skill. So that no man would take advantage. I did not give you that art. So that no man would enjoy it. There is nothing I put in you. That shall not be manifested. You're lying to yourself. It will. When you understand that reality, you only ask yourself when. Praise God. You only just ask yourself when, how. How do I position myself in this? I told people, even if you reject the word, but you're born again, but you reject certain truths, you'll still be better than if you had not received Jesus. If you're saying, Apostle, everything is hitting me. If you are not born again by now, you'd be dead. Praise God. Meaning that to be born again, you're always and will always be an advantage. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It would be worst. Not worse. Worst. If you had not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. He says, I have not called you. That should not be manifested. I have not called you to be a hidden gem. I have not called you to be a, a hidden story. I have, you will not die before that thing that I put in you comes out. Think about it. The only problem is every time men think about these things, they compare themselves with others. The Bible says comparing themselves with themselves, they became fools. God has not called you to look at her and be like her, no. God has called you to look inside you and say, God, what is the unique me? What is the distinctive me? What is that other me that nobody has seen? Praise God. I repeat again, there is nothing God has ordained you to be that won't be. It's not possible. You are created unto good works. You are ordained the fall for them. That means he gave you all the ability you need to be the best. People might never believe in you, but convince yourself. Believe in yourself. You have to get to a point like me. Where I don't need a man to tell me, wow, apostle, you're a deep preacher. Even if they don't tell me, I sit in the car and I say, apostle grace. You're deep. I, I don't need any man to tell it to me. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because I know who I'm made of. I know what I'm made of. I know who is inside me. And I know what God needed to collect to make me inside. Treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of what? Power might be of God and not of us. So, I don't look at my insufficiency. I don't look at my ability. I don't look at how skillful. No. There is something inside me that tells me, uh-uh. 
you're bigger than what you're able. Somebody shout hallelujah. Have you ever sat around very smart people and they start talking and you're like, what in the world am I doing here? When I just started uh, banking many years ago, I remember the first time I sat in a meeting with these big guys, head of departments and what, guys who had been in the, in the bank for like 15, 20 years and they're using terms. And I'm correcting myself like I understand. And in my head, I'm like, what in the world did that guy say? How long did it take him to know that? St-? And I'm listening like this. Mm, mm, yeah. And then they mention a statement. And then you Google it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Technically solvent, I see. Mm, technically solvent. Praise God. And when I walk out of that meeting, do you know what I do? I start to tell myself, Father, I'm here because you knew. That I had the ability to understand everything they are saying. If you knew that I did not deserve to be here, seated in such a conversation, there is no way you'd bring me here. You'd have taken me to Lucere to look after cattle, but I am here. Tell your neighbor, sit down with Charlo. No. Praise God. The fact that I'm sitting next to guys who are speaking a language I don't understand. It only means to say that there's something you see inside there that can understand it. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I've been on pulpits in America that scare. Praise God. They say, you're preaching on Thursday. Krefla is preaching on Sunday. Newman is preaching on Friday. And I'm like, apostle of grace, not that sufficiency is of me, that I should think of anything as of me, but the sufficiency is of God, which has made me an able minister of the covenant. Praise God. Tell your neighbor my light. Yes. Yes. Tell your neighbor yes. And then you stand with preachers. The guy says, hey, how are you doing? You good? You preacher? You preaching in the MC? Oh, oh good. How long have you been in ministry? You even feel ashamed to speak. Uh, some years, a few years. Then he turns and says, I've been in the gospel for 30 years now, 35. How old are you? You even fear telling him, sir. Those years are more than I have existed. But God, tell your neighbor, but God, but God. He says, brethren, consider your calling. Not many of you are noble. Not many of you are wise. Not many of you are stronger. The Lord has chosen the foolish things of this world that he might confound the things which are mighty. The rest is not to the swift. It is not. The battle is not to the men who are strong. Tell your neighbor it's not. Bread is not to wise men. It is not. Riches are not to men of understanding. They are not. Favor is not to men of skill. But time and rubber shock or terrible. Happens to them all. Tell somebody I cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. Tell somebody I can not be here. I can't. Praise God. You go on a conference and a man starts this way. He says, I was here when this happened. I was here when this happened. See, I seen it all. I seen it all. Then, dear Rebecca, you ask yourself, what have I seen? I see the Lord. (laughs) I see the Lord. That's who I have seen. I have not preached for 20 years, but I saw him. The 
crescent of days, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Tell your neighbor I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Tell your neighbor you're about to be manifested. You cannot be hid. You cannot be hid. Yes, I know these things you've been through. But you will not be. It doesn't matter how long. It must come out. Must come out. And today is a day for somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. Praise God. I don't know who I'm talking to. That's why he says, and these are they of the good ground who listen to the word and receive it. Somebody shout hallelujah. And bring forth fruit. Some 30 fold. Some 60 fold. Some 100 fold. Receive this word today. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm talking to that person. You preach in the shadows. Hallelujah. You go in front of mirrors and preach things. And you don't know how it will come out. I'm talking to that pastor. That man of God. That minister. Who feels like they are hid. Ah, 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 ah. It is only. A matter of time. There are thousands and thousands of people here. There are thousands and thousands of people here. Yes. But make this person and say, God, right now, I might be in a congregation, but in a few weeks, in a few days, in a few months, something will come up and put me up there to your glory, to your glory, to your glory. There is no last in this. There is responsibility in this. Somebody shout hallelujah. We also are in conferences too. We saw wonderful men preaching. And you say, God, will I ever do that? Can I be like that? You look at a man walking and your eyes can't leave him. You're like, what is on this man? Who is he? Are you hearing me? But when you go back home, you tell yourself, but it is in there. It is in there. Somebody shout hallelujah. Your future is so much defined by the things that attract you. If greatness doesn't attract you, I'm not talking to you. Deep calleth and too deep. <laughs> iron serpents, iron so then other commands continents, serpents another. When people come to Fanero, some ministers, no, I'm not their standard. No, I'm only a voice telling them it is possible. You can do more. Praise God. Oh, and I've not stopped dreaming. Praise God. I have not stopped dreaming. Why? Because I cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. The right one will recognize what's on you. And by the time they recognize it, you're so dead to the consequences of it that you won't receive it with lust. You will receive it with grace and responsibility because you know this is what God called you to do. I was made for great things. Don't be deceived by what I'm putting on. Don't be deceived by the color of my skin. Don't be deceived by the color. Oh, hey, no, it is bigger. Tell your neighbor it is bigger. Don't be deceived. Tell your neighbor don't be deceived. You have not seen anything yet. I cannot be here. And nobody can convince me out of it. Every time I'm walking, I feel it. Ha, have, have you ever been there? And you're feeling something. You don't know its name. You don't know its color. You've never seen it anywhere. There are men that look like it, but it's not it. But when you look there, you're like... It even changes the way you pray. Because sometimes you want to call it a name and you find your tongue sliding into Rabasu. Rako, bro, sike prakatalabaya. Rarababakos. 
Sherry. I'm talking to a dreamer. I'm talking to a dreamer. Praise God. I'm talking to a dreamer. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So what did he say in Mark? Mark 4 23. Right? He was saying, he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick for is nothing hid that shall not be manifested neither shall anything uh, kept secret that should not come abroad. If any man have ears, let him hear. And 24 says, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear. For with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And to you that here shall more be given. That means when you call for greatness, hear great stuff. Praise God. One time I was in a book shop, in, and so I met this book of a pastor, and he had written how to grow your congregation. From zero to 200 and to 800. <laughs> I just skipped that book. Because I knew what it was going to do to me. <laughs> then a pastor with 20 members will pick it. Because he says, ah, me. I am a foot. I will grow slowly. You grow slowly. Grow slowly. Grow slowly. I was not called to grow slowly. Yes. It is step by step, but but how fast are the steps? Hallelujah. Yes, it is brick by brick, but how fast does the next brick go on the building? I was called for speed. Hallelujah. There are things I can't listen to. There are sermons I can't listen to, and I do it deliberately because there's there are things I hear and they don't call it out. They just kill it and make me look like the next neighbor. Ah! I want to hear things that when I go back home, I... Ah! Some people call it emotional. These guys are emotional. No, you haven't understood it yet. The day you understand it, you realize it's not emotional. It's praise. Those people are emotional. I have never seen a fellow who speaks that and he has made a layman walk. The day you make a layman walk, you'll understand that it's not being emotional. No. It is how powerful God is and sometimes you don't know how to express it. Somebody shout hallelujah. He tells you, take heed what you hear. Guys got clothes. Got God's blood. Are you hearing me? Paul did on these clothes of Joseph and took them to their father, Jacob, and threw it to them. Hallelujah. To him. Examine these things. Examine this cloth, whether it is for your son. Those words only that suppose that the cloth was for the son. Examine it. They just told him, look at this cloth and see whether it is for your son. They didn't tell him that this cloth is for Joseph. We found him mold and eaten by wild animals. No. They just got a cloth and made simple words. Sometimes Satan does not need to tell you negative stuff. Sometimes he just needs to suggest predicament. He just needs to suggest danger. He just needs to suggest possibility of failure. He doesn't need to speak failure words. No. He just needs to just even give you the possibility to fail. They threw clothes to him and told him, examine these clothes whether they are for your son. And the Bible says, and Jacob concluded in his heart that the wild animals have eaten his boy. And from that day, the Lord never spoke to him. The voice of God was shut from him. Because he had a voice suggesting that there was a possibility of losing his son. God never spoke to him. God's blood. 
And he lived miserable many years. He lived miserable many, many years. By God's blood. God's blood killed a man's destiny. Put sorrow on a man and killed the voice of God over his ears. Because somebody suggested something. And he believed it. Joseph was alive. The dreamer was alive. The dreamer was alive. I said the dreamer was alive. Dreamers don't die of disease. They don't die under the hands of those that hate them. Dreamers don't die under their critics. Dreamers don't die under their persecutors. Dreamers don't die under their accusers. Get it. Nobody against you can destroy you. It's not possible. The man moves by God's blood and the voice of God shuts for him all of all those years. And God never spoke to him again. Until the time he told that the dreamer is still alive. That's when the Bible says the spirit of the Lord comes upon him. And Israel now comes to himself. Oh, my son is alive. My son is alive. My son is alive. His spirit was revived. He, his spirit was awakened. Israel said, oh, let's go and I meet my son. But from that day, Israel died in Jacob. Some of you, that's why you don't hear God. Sometimes it's not that they told you negative reports. There was a suggestion. You look like someone, and who is this? You look like someone suffering from this. You look like someone who is going through this. You look like someone who will be this. You look like you are going to, and then you, you, you find yourself going by the testimony of God's blood. Oh, 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 there is blood bigger. I said there is blood bigger. That blood was not only said for your sins, but to give you a certain nature. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says when they told him all the words of the dreamer, Joseph, which he has said unto them, and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. That means it died the day he believed God's blood. Dreamers are not killed. Tebakulimba. Dreamers are not killed. They can be thrown in pits. They can be put in prison. They can be accused. But dreamers don't die. They don't die. Praise God. They always outlive their persecutors. You will outlive your persecutors. Tell your neighbor, you'll outlive everything that accuses the dream of God inside you. Why? Because he began that work and he'll sit to a culture. I'm talking to people who feel that at one particular point you believe God for certain things. But consequently over the years God's blood started crossing your head and thoughts and confessions and things came. And they started to kill the thing that was inside you. Circumstances started hitting you left, right and center. And you go to a point and say, God, will I ever have it again? Listen to the voice of God. There's a reason why in all your foolishness, he still showed it to you. In all your failures, he still revealed himself to you. In all your beatings, in every way you've wasted and been wasted, beaten and been beaten, he still revealed himself to you. He began that work and he will see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. You can not be heed. Talk to God. Talk to God. Come on, raise your voice and talk to God. The power to make possible is here. I say the power to make possible is here. Talk to God. Talk to God. I don't know what is inside you. I don't know what you're made of. But I'm sure you're made of something. Call it out. Talk to it. Talk to it. Refuse to die. Refuse. Refuse. Refuse to give up. Put your hand in there and say, God, I'm believing you. There's a reason why you showed it to me. 
There is a reason why I dreamt myself in stadiums. There is a reason why I dreamt myself on flights. Going to heal the sick and raise the dead. There is a reason why I dreamt myself looking after the orphan and the widow. There is a reason why I saw myself in this place, in that place. Why me? Talk to him. Sharaba. You cannot be hid. 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 Because you're that the Lord has placed on me this evening I call out every hidden thing in the name of Jesus that is in you the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you are you ready are you ready are you ready it's days like this it's moments like this that things are defined on our lives beyond men could ever imagine and articulate. Right now in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, separate that individual. The power of God is coming on you. The power of God is coming on you. Whatever is in you that God has called to be, I command it out! Out! Destinies! Out businesses, out ministries, out arts, out skills, out talents, out wisdoms, out songs, out worship, out public house. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Father, we thank you. Because something begins tonight. 
on each of our lives. <laughs> we cannot be healed. The world will hear you. I say the world will hear you. If you believe it, shout amen. The world will hear you. Televisions will talk about you. Newspapers will write about you. Radio stations will discuss your testimony. Your families will tell. Men of color, black, whites, everyone will talk. The ground will testify. The lands will testify. Oceans will testify that there is something on your life. Somebody's life just got so alive. Clap for your hands to Jesus. Yes. Clap your hands to Jesus. Come on. Clap like you've received it. And that you're going to bear fruit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you're here and you've heard me preaching, this message is for people who have received Jesus. You're missing out a great testimony. More just than just the things that accompany our salvation. Jesus loves you. And he shed his blood for you. He gave himself for you. He loved you and intended that your soul not perish. And I feel this evening he's drawing you to receive him as his Lord and Savior. Please do not reject him. If you're there and you want to give your life to Jesus, repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard you. I have heard your message. And my heart is made up to believe that you died and shed your blood for me. And you were raised for my glory to take away my sin and to make me a new creation. Tonight, I receive you as Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Finero, make manifest.